greeting my colony member. Welcome to Project Arthrogenesis, the living chronicle of Arthronia's wild evolution. Today, we soar into the skies where a monstrous giant dragonfly rules as the apex predator. But danger doesn't only come from above. In the shadows of the wetlands, another rival stirs. As your hive guardian, I'll guide you through this aerial assassin's reign and the hidden threat that could challenge it. Our task force ventures into the woodlands, scouting for sustenance. They stumble upon a squadron of flying creatures preying on a giant marsh beetle. Having successfully slain the giant marsh beetle, our soldiers attempt to pilfer their prize, cautiously creeping closer. Alas, they detect our presence. Immediately, they take flight, launching an aerial assault. Like miniature fighter jets, they dive toward our ranks. Their unpredictable attacks overwhelm our forces. Several of our comrades fall. Those who survive swiftly retreat toward the safety of the anthill. From this harrowing encounter, we can identify our attackers as Thanatopteron hydranus or the dire dragonfly. Thanato, from the Greek, signifies death. Pteron means wing. Hydranus denotes its primary habitat, Hydrania. This name reflects its lethal hunting prowess and dominance of Hydrania's skies. Wingspan, 1.8 to 2.2 meters. Body length, 1.2 to 1.5 meters. Weight, 8 to 12 kilograms. It possesses four elongated, membranous wings with reinforced vein structures, enabling high-velocity flight and extreme agility. Gigantic compound eyes with ultraviolet vision, providing a near 360-degree field of view, detecting movement from kilometers away. Serrated, blade-like mandibles for slicing prey, coupled with a powerful suction mechanism for draining internal fluids, spiked raptorial forelegs to seize and immobilize prey mid-air. A lightweight, durable chitinous exoskeleton darkly pigmented to absorb solar heat in the cooler hydranian skies. As the apex aerial predator, it regulates populations of airborne and aquatic creatures, preventing overpopulation. Distinct from solitary dragonflies, Thanatopteron operates in small hunting packs, three to five individuals, coordinating attacks like aerial raptors. They communicate using body signals and high-frequency sounds to strategize in flight. They employ rapid acceleration, up to 80 kilometers per hour, to ambush prey before they can react. But the threat doesn't end in the skies. Consider the larval stage. Length, 80 centimeters to 1 meter. Weight, 5 to 7 kilograms larvae possess. A thick, segmented exoskeleton reinforced with dense chitin, providing protection against aquatic predators. Highly evolved extendable raptorial jaws, capable of impaling and tearing prey, projecting forward like a spear, similar to real-world dragonfly nymphs, but with extended reach. Six sturdy jointed legs, equipped with tiny spines for gripping slippery prey. Rear legs are adapted for powerful lunges gill-like structures within its abdomen to breathe underwater. It can also store air bubbles for brief terrestrial excursions. An ability to utilize jet propulsion by expelling water through a specialized siphon, enabling swift strikes and ambushes. Unlike solitary dragonfly nymphs, Thanatopteron nymphs form coordinated hunting groups, four to six individuals, to overwhelm larger prey. They employ camouflage, blending seamlessly with mud and aquatic vegetation, awaiting unsuspecting creatures. Primarily hunting during twilight and nighttime hours, utilizing sensory hairs and low-light vision to track prey. Our surviving soldier plunges into the lake, hoping the dragonflies won't follow. Yet, far from the riverbank, a swarm of dragonfly larvae ambushes him. Tragically, our entire scouting team is lost. Fortunately, they transmitted pheromone signals, which we managed to intercept. We must devise a plan, or risk being culled by nature.
bolstering our forces will better prepare us for combat. Our legions persist in expanding our hunting grounds eastward toward the lake. This time, with greater numbers and employing mud entrapment, we manage to overwhelm our targeted prey. But suddenly, we encounter another swarm of colossal dragonflies. They immediately assault us. But luckily, one blunders into a trap meant for our quarry. We respond in kind, turning the tide with our superior numbers. Close quarters combat, even with their swift maneuvers, cannot withstand our guerrilla attacks. Eventually, we subdue them, though one manages to escape. Upon returning, we discover a giant marsh beetle slain by dragonfly larvae. But what horrifies us more is the gargantuan monster that slaughters the larvae. The remaining larvae scatter. Simultaneously, a strange creature strikes with blinding speed from below, killing one of our soldiers. The remaining troops evade the creature, but we approach the colossal monster. The unseen attacker vanished after its kill. We are forced to engage the massive beast. It annihilates our soldiers. The survivors must retreat to the anthill. The remaining soldiers dispatch a pheromone signal, summoning reinforcements. We dispatch four support squads. Precisely as anticipated, our forces directly confront the bizarre giant beetle. We launch our assault. However, it maneuvers with shocking agility, tearing apart one of our squads. The remaining soldiers struggle to breach its armor. After crushing our warriors, it attacks the other squads. With a single strike, it can crush our armor. Our remaining forces are thrown into disarray and flee back to the anthill. From the visual data we could gather, this creature is Titanodites aquavorax, or giant diving beetle. Titanodites, titanic diver. Titan means gigantic, dites means diver, from Greek aquavorax, water eater. Aqua means water, vorax means eater in Latin, meaning giant water-eating diver, a fitting title for this formidable aquatic predator. Length, 1.8 to 2.2 meters. Weight, 500 to 700 kilograms. It has a compacted carapace with tightly interlocking chitinous plates highly resistant to bite and puncture attacks. Powerful, flattened, paddle-like rear legs, capable of generating explosive bursts in the water. Enlarged, serrated mandibles capable of crushing the exoskeletons of aquatic crustaceans or cracking the bones of larger prey. Adapted air sacs under the carapace for neutral buoyancy and rapid directional shifts. Shorter antennae, relying more on sensing vibrations and water pressure changes than long-range olfactory cues. Dominating Hydrania's underwater predator niche, shaping prey population dynamics. It kills prey with brute force rather than speed, targeting the injured, slow, or unwary. It is capable of leaping partially out of the water to snatch prey skimming the surface. Females lay eggs in soft underwater mud beneath lily pads, larvae hatch, and immediately begin predation. Length, 2.5 to 3.2 meters. Weight, 200 to 300 kilograms. The larvae have an elongated eel-like body built for maneuverability and stealth in tight stream beds and dense vegetation. Needle-like spearing mandibles with backward-facing barbs, ideal for gripping prey and injecting digestive enzymes lateral gill filaments as highly efficient oxygen extraction systems, appearing as rippling appendages along the body's sides. Algae-like green and brown exoskeleton with irregular patterns to blend in with root tangles and stream mud. They more often prowl the stream bottom at night to decrease detection and ambush effectiveness. They remain motionless until prey passes within striking distance then lunge with an elastic, whip-like motion. They also exhibit cannibalism, ensuring only the strongest survive to adulthood. The surviving soldiers finally return safely. The opposite shore offers considerable resources, necessitating continued control of the area. Therefore, we immediately send reinforcements for retribution, 
and to continue expansion. This time, we deploy 10 squads. We must ensure the crossing is utterly secure from other predators. With a greater number of soldiers, no other creatures will harass us. And now, once again, we encounter the giant diving beetle. Our troops attack it, but the beetle retaliates, killing our soldiers. Our troops immediately assault from all sides while it attacks another squad. Though its armor is formidable, our relentless attacks inflict substantial damage, especially when targeting its joints. Combat in the water still grants it an advantage, enabling it to escape with grievous wounds. We succeeded in driving it from this area, though we sacrificed several of our comrades. Ultimately, our forces successfully expand into the woodlands east of Lake Hydrania. In the next episode, we will venture to another island already controlled by raptor ants. What conditions await us on those distant continents we hope to conquer? Stay tuned. And don't forget to check the status of other islands. I've included the link below.